Hello. Um, so, I think I said yesterday, oh, I'm not going to do a video every day working on the, uh, on this painting of Miles Marev. But then I thought, well, except I probably, now that I've started working on it, I probably should just to uh, run through the end process. Um, whether I'll post this today or wait a few days or whatever, I guess I'll, I guess we'll find out because I don't even know at this point. So, uh, this is all dry that we did in the last video. And you know what? Surprisingly enough, hey, it's actually opaque. Um, but that's okay because I will just redraw on the letters. And before I get that, uh, just for anyone who missed the last video, this is my, he's half mouse, half rat. His name's Miles Marev. If you go back on my channel, there's some shorts, actually from like last year, I was doing some cartooning and I'm still working on that book. Just, you know, not really, but I still intend to get back to working on it. Uh, called Miles Marev's Pursuit of Happiness or whatever the working title at that point was. So there's some cartoon line drawings of the little dude. And um, he, um, also on my channel, I posted a video of a sketchbook tour of drawings I did of Bono as a mouse. <laughs> it's kind of a goof. It's a weird story, I know. Um, that was also mostly last year. And from that spawned my character, Ricky B. Rat, and this little dude, Miles. So... Ricky B. Rad, I started posting cartoons of last year, um, occasional ones, and then this year, since around Easter, I've been posting every Sunday a um, marker sketch in my sketchbook um, to um, facebook.com slash Ricky B. The Rock and Roll Rat and, you know, Instagram and whatnot. And those heavily feature Miles. Um, so as I think I said last yesterday, I should remember by the way I said, but I don't. I had this idea, because I wanted to get, uh, get back to painting more, to start doing like 3D rendered, you know, like semi-realistic. Let me reach over and zoom in on his little face. Pardon the creaky chair. But uh, instead of making him a line drawing, um to make him look kind of like an actual person would if they were like a mouse person. Um, so anyways, I started this portrait and the joke is Miles is running for city council of Ratsville with the slogan, corruption you can trust. So here he is with his uh, sort of slicked back hair and his powder blue suit. What was the old Frank Zappa line? Um, in heavenly bank account, uh, his heavenly or his humble servant with his humble blue suit, and all that. Because um, something about the hair just said '80s televangelist to me, so I went with powder blue. And then I think I said yesterday I went googling for pictures of '80s televangelists and discovered they all wore like dark blue suits, not really powder blue. So I don't even know where that came from, but we're sticking with it because I think it looks good on Miles. Um, so. And I mentioned uh, yesterday about the grid and reference, so I figured I dug those out and I'll show you. So this was the original doodle sketch. I don't know how much that shows up in the camera. So you can see the kind of smug expression and my notes. Uh, this was for um, like the sketchbook. Sunday cartoon version of this with Ricky um, and that well that's something else entirely but gridded so that was the rough sketch and then I think I mentioned I used you know what politician are you going to use for a reference of a pose like this well it's going to be you know who so I photoshopped in that I think I mentioned that is a different head Trump head on a different Trump body because in this one he was kind of looking left and that didn't work but I like the pose so I did a little Photoshop then I did an extra layer and this was in Procreate with the cartoon based on that and if I 
pull it up close to the camera, you can see the grid that I drew on. And I also exported, although I forgot to draw on his tail, uh, my bad, how horrible of me that I forgot his tail in the original drawing. Um, and then I exported that layer separately for reference and printed them all so I can kind of could kind of get a little bit of the shadowing or shading. Well, it is shadowing sort of from here, but the main reference is that cartoon and that. And then obviously I fleshed out the face because, you know, Miles does not. Miles, I think I said in the last video, Miles inadvertently ended up looking like my Uncle Peter, not like Donald Trump. Um, so it's not, it's kind of a rough pose. It's more of a, what you call a pose reference, right? But anyways, we're going to use this because when I painted over yesterday, I was like, I think when I started the video, I was like, oh, I might like outline each letter and, um, let me just, again, excuse the creaky chair. I thought I would outline each letter and um, all that in about, I don't know, 10 minutes in, I was like, ah, screw this. Blech. Just painted over the whole thing and said, we will redraw the letters. So that's what we're going to do first. Um, and uh, these are just cheap ass acrylic paint markers that I got on Amazon like four years ago. Yeah, I think I got them in 2020. Um, so, first things first, let me just make sure, oh, there's some juice in this one. I have certain colors I go to time and time again, and then they tend to be, um, depleted. So, using a reference, and let me just make sure this is actually going to show up. I kind of does. Um, I don't know how much this is going to actually show up on camera. But let's try our best, eh? Um, are you in focus? Maybe. So I'm going to quickly, uh, and at least I have, uh, it's kind of off camera, but I haven't f covered up the grid lines in the background so I can use those as a reference. So we're going to start here and the M starts under his, maybe I'll zoom up just a little bit. The M starts kind of with his flank here. So um, I'm, I'm not going to do this super tidy because I know how messy I am with a brush. So, uh, but they're about, uh, oops, I'm actually a little high. It's okay, we will paint things over. Somebody, well, I have friends who would take that out of context. A little high, are you, Pura? No, not that way. Um, so, where does the other M kind of comes down below the corner of his lapel? And I realize I'm referencing things that are off. Yeah. So, while I'm doing this and trying to draw lettering and talk at the same time. Is that is there a glare? I think I can, it shows up in the camera, we'll see. Um, what do I want to say in addition? To, yesterday I was giving a bunch of biographical details about Miles um, on his mom and his dad. And uh, Zoom out a bit more, so I'm not having to move the camera constantly as I, because I'm going to work back in and out from the sides to the middle, so I get the spacing right. So, um, anyways, uh, what was I going to say? So Miles, um, I mentioned a bit about his uh, folks. His mom is a rat. Um, Belinda Ratson, who is the aunt of, um, who's the annoying wine aunt, more specifically, of Ricky B. Rat's uh, girlfriend, Baby Ratson. And his dad is um, Larry Marov, who runs the 
who owns all the uh, used car lots in Moston. Um, Miles, well, he's an accountant. I think I mentioned he also is an Elvis impersonating wedding officiant, which is kind of funny because he is like the biggest cynic when it comes to love and all that kind of crap. Um, you know, sometimes when you get these kinds of dudes, it always turns out that some some girl broke their heart, so, you know, spoiler. Uh, we will eventually find out that that was probably the case with Miles as well. Um, and since there's a bit of, well, there is, I was going to say a bit of, it's in the title, Ricky B. the Rock and Roll Rat. There, you know, I've always been into um, rock and rock culture and all that sort of stuff. So... There is actually a theme song for this little dude. And I don't know if anyone remembers, uh, not the, and when I say theme song, I mean like one that I kind of have in my head when I'm writing about him. Um, I don't know if every, anyone remembers a band called Extreme. And they were kind of, well, their biggest hit was more than words off of the album Pornography. And, um, the interesting thing with pornography, if I remember correctly from being, you know, a kid obsessed with uh, hair metal who used to read um, Metal Edge magazine religiously, I remember seeing interviews with them, and they were talking about that, in a way, pornography was kind of a, um, a bit of a concept album, so to speak, and what they said and I'm relying on my memory from like, how from what, 1989 or 1990, something like that. So 35 years ago. So I'll take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt because I could be completely wrong. But um, they were saying that it was kind of a concept album of progressing from being a young bratty boy sort of going through teenage years and the development and all that um so they had some songs on there that were kind of obnox deliberately obnoxious because they're um talking about kind of a stage of life right and uh i'm gonna give his uh, podium of order here um anyways one of the songs I think they kind of caught a little bit of heat for it, but I at the time. But I always took it as um, kind of more of a parody, rather than um, a, a serious indication of their own opinions. But there was a song on there called "He Man Woman Hater," and it's kind of a funny song, actually. Of uh, you know this uh, attitude, this kind of spoof of yeah, I guess. They're possibly talking a little bit about bands like um, Motley Crue. Um, I hope that noise isn't too annoying. It's just the way it is when you're working on Canvas and textile. But, um, anyways, the lyrics are kind of like something like, uh, sooner or later, you'll be a he man, woman hater. It's inevitable. Um, and to become one, you got to really hate to love them. He, man, woman, hater. Anyways, um, for some reason that started popping in my head when I was uh, writing some short stories involving Miles. Um, so <laughs> then I was kind of like, yeah, that actually kind of works as a, as a theme song for Miles. Um, so, anyways, that I have, I have that now. It's like on my I have a Spotify playlist for Ricky B. Rat <laughs> that has you know I have stuff like um, Ricky worships Sid Vicious. So there's a bunch of Sex Pistols and Sid's um, solo work. You know, not that there was a great amount of that, but you know, like his version of My Way and uh, him sing, singing something else and whatnot. So I, of course, added that song to um, that list, along with there's another one called uh, Money and God We Trust, 
And you know, this guy's a money-grubbing little accountant mouse dude. So um, that's also on there. But um, anyways, I it's going to be one of those things where I've probably listened to it so much because AI, it's a funny song. I always thought it was funny even when I was a kid. It's like, oh, this song's hilarious. And then I probably never thought about it for like, I don't know. 30 years. <laughs> like, I've forgotten it existed. I probably, I like, obviously, you don't know if you've actually forgotten because if somebody had mentioned it to me, I'd probably be like, oh yeah, I remember that song, but I didn't ever think about it. And um, then it just popped in my head, and then I start been listening to it <laughs> as part of the playlist when I'm about to write a new podcast episode or a new uh, script for future purposes. If it involves Miles, that's one of the ones I'll listen to. So I'm sure when, you know, Spotify at the end of the year does that kind of rap thing and it'll show your top five songs and I guarantee you He-Man Woman Hater is going to be on my list. <laughs> It'll probably be someone going, what on earth is, the why are you listening to that? I was like, um, well, it's Miles' fault. Uh, did I start this way too? Yeah, Rantsville City. Hmm. Gonna have to. I'm gonna have to t clean this up a little bit. And again, sorry for the scratchy sound. Rantsville. have a spacing issue here. What can I do? Oh, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to cheat. I don't know how. If I zoom in, you can sort of see we got this big ass gap. You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm going to cheat. I'm going to put a wedge of cheese. There. <laughs> I didn't screw up the spacing. I swear to god, and that also is not according to here, because you can see here for Ratsville. Well, I kind of messed up because it should be entirely centered over miles. Instead, I started it over the M and then it just kind of stretched. So I fi figured, well, I'll make it stretch corner to corner, but I also probably, it probably needed to be taller. Um, so anyways, we've got the rough end there. And now let's put in his little slogan, Corruption You Can Trust. And that actually will fit under his name. Um, in theory, fingers crossed, pinky swear. And I'm gonna, again, kind of do this. Do it a little bit better. Um, so anyways, Miles' song. And I'm gonna have to, uh, I'll have some explaining to do, possibly. You know. Um at the end of the year when I'm posting pictures of my um, Spotify, what is it called, Wrapped? Um, but then, you know what, last year, was it last year? Or no, it was the first year, 2022, because I only got a Spotify in um, July or August of 2022. And that was when I was um, developing, uh, well, wasn't quite developing because it, it existed. I was posting it, but it was still in the early days. Did I just say dages? That's not even a word. Early days of... See, this is what happens when I try to write and talk at the same time. Uh, anyways, I was in the early days of um, my other comic project, which is um, Noah's Archipelago. And... A very early version of Noah was actually kind of a gigolo. <laughs> so one of my top five songs for 2025 was David Lee Ross, Just a Gigolo. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that's kind of how we do things here. There we go. Corruption you can trust, it fits. So, and probably... Of course, the more I zoom out, the less likely. When I'm sitting, that hot pink is like really noticeable. Um, so, 
We've got our marker. We can set these aside. And behind the bottle of gloss medium that I almost never use, that's on my desk anyways. Um, I'll set those aside. What letter are we... Oh, what letter are we going to... What color are we going to do the letter in? I swear sometimes I'm not actually dyslexic, but sometimes my brain likes to flip words around. So we have things like, what letter are we going to do the color? <laughs> you know, uh, what to do is, what color are we going to do the letter? And you know what? What I was thinking, and this is what we're going to do, because it's what my brain is saying, is I am going to make up some fancy yellow medium and some iridescent brilliant gold. Does that even show up there? Uh, some shimmery stuff. I'll probably, hmm, if I mix the gold in with the yellow, the gold is not going to show up. So I think I will do them yellow first and then. Um, I will go over with gold after, and I'm going to use, and I may regret this, a flat, this is a chisel blender, um, for instance size 4 flat, so what was I saying about my friend who paints huge and insists the smallest brush you need is a number 4 flat? I kind of think uh, that's not necessarily going to be the case, but uh, let's see what happens here. Um, and let's also see Hansi Yellow. Uh, I may need to put some white underneath that to make it more opaque. Otherwise, it's going to end up just being kind of like a lighter shade of green, which is cool as well. Yeah, we're going to have to mix in some white, I think. And... Yeah, where did I put my painting knife? Of course, I'm referencing things that are the leaf below the level of the screen. But in theory, this should make it more opaque, sort of. So, uh, what else can I mention while I'm filling in Miles's name? Um, so that Christmas story where Miles is moving to Ratsville. Uh, oh, did I, I kind of mentioned a bit about Ratsville. Let's um, actually kind of touch on that a bit. So geography, you know, a lot of real world stuff exists in the world of Ratsville and Mouston because, you know, Ricky will make reference to his bosses working in Chicago this weekend, or uh, people have gone down to LA to work. So, like, it's kind of sort of semi based in the real world, except we have this Ratland and um, Mouseland sort of situation separated by a, a uh, canyon. And there's a bridge over the canyon, obviously. That's how the uh, rat dudes go over and cause trouble during uh, Friday night most in Mayhem. It's about an hour's drive between Ratsville and Mostyn. Um, and I still haven't decided whether like when uh, Ricky is talking about um, how much he adores Sid Vicious, whether Sid Vicious is like a person in this world or whether Sid Vicious and any other like actual people who are mentioned in it are actually like rat or mouse people in the context of um, the show. 
Ricky seems to think um, that there's only uh, either most, you know, rat dudes or most guys. Um, but then Ricky, Ricky didn't pay a lot of attention in school, so, you know. Um, anyways, that's kind of an open question for now. Um, but, um, but we definitely have the most talent and we have the, um, Ratland as well. And, uh. There are beauty pageants there because Ricky's girlfriend and all the females of her family. So, um, so Miles's cousins are all beauty queens or aspiring beauty queens in the case of uh, Baby. Baby has not won Miss Ratsville. Uh, you have to win Miss Ratsville to go on to be qualified for Miss Ratland. Um, but Baby isn't determined to keep trying until she either wins it or is 28 and they stop letting her in the pageant. Um, and Miles, not the biggest fan of this stuff. Um, of course, he figures that all the beauty queen types are two-timing trollops. Like a certain Gina, but he promised, but he swore he won't think about Gina anymore. So we don't really get too many hints about who Gina, what Gina did. I mean, we obviously can figure out who Gina was by the fact that Miles gives a damn um, and complains about her. But uh, so that's that. Um, baby is. I think I said last time. Baby is a cosmetology student. This will come up in, I'm just going to give a little, not a full spoiler, but a little hint for one of the October podcasts. Ricky is going to be um, dragged over to the beauty school to serve as a guinea pig, and he's not going to be happy about it. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I'll be probably the second episode in October, right before Halloween. Uh, Miles, of course, would never consent to that sort of... Uh, would never fall prey to uh, that sort of shenanigans. Um, obviously, I'm going to need a second layer on these letters, but uh, we will uh, deal with that another day, because this will need time to dry. But... Um, Scoop this E in just a little bit. So we got that gap, that gap. This is gonna be a little well, maybe what I'll do is just kind of scoop that out more, make his L a little more square and less rectangular. And that'll kind of fudge it just enough. What do I want to say about the graphic novel? I mentioned the graphic novel. The graphic novel actually does not have Miles in it. And the reason for that is um, because the script was written before Miles existed. Um, like I had what I would call proto-Miles, but um, in that uh, Bonomo sketchbook, and I'll put a card or a link or whatever um, to that. But... Um, in that, I have um, what I call the Marginal Mouse Men. And that, it shows in that um, sketchbook tour. So the Marginal Mouse Men uh, did exist at the time, but they didn't have names. Last summer when I was writing this, um, starting to write this graphic novel. So, um, is it just me or I think those letters are getting taller as they go to the side, but... Uh, it is what it is. Um, anyway, so Miles, as an independent character, wasn't developed until the end of August last year, but the graphic novel, I wrote the script for it in July, so 
Uh, Miles not in that book. Which is fine, because Miles has his own life, so he doesn't have to... He doesn't uh, show up in all of Ricky's adventures. He gets mentioned so far in both podcasts, but kind of in passing. Um, but in some future graphic novel, I'm sure we will see this guy. Uh, but anyways, that graphic novel is uh, Ricky one morning. I don't know, this isn't a spoiler because I'm talking about what happens in like the first five pages. Ricky is woken up from his hangover on a Monday morning by the sound of a voice from heaven calling his name. Uh, Ricky st starts talking about having not heard the voice of God before, but he was pretty sure that that's what he was hearing. Um, and he kind of dithers on that a bit. And then he relates that what God, or what Ricky thinks God said to him, because Ricky isn't a liar, but he is a misunderstander for sure. Um, the Lord spe spaketh unto Ricky and apparently told him to go to sea and get that big shiny rock from the shipwreck movie because that will impress his girlfriend, baby. And Ricky doesn't know anything about going to sea, but, you know, God spoke to him and he does want to impress his girlfriend, baby. So, <laughs> what choice does he have, right? And then the book unfolds from there. Um, and it's kind of a ridiculous little story, but, you know, that's what makes it fun. Um, so, um, uh, so we got that. I do have, have a couple ideas. Originally, when I started writing these scripts that have become the podcast, I had thought, oh, I'm got every one of these scripts is going to become a book. That's before I realized how long the book is taking. Um, so, and also before I had the podcast. Well, this is starting to look like either a John Deere, or for those of you in Canada, Dollarama has this exact um, color scheme. Um, don't tell Miles that. He'll be very upset if he thinks we're saying that he looks cheap. Um, or that he looks um, country rule type of whatever um anyways so so i originally thought oh you know miles will come in in like the third or fourth book and then i realized that the books take a lot longer than i thought so realistically i can't do a book for every single you know, script that I wrote because it would just take forever. Um, so that's why I decided to do the podcast because then I can use those stories. But kind of what it'll end up being is um, the smaller stories, so to speak. Uh, the more like kind of slice of life, no matter how absurd or ridiculous they are. But those sorts of stories are the ones that are going to um, go into the podcast. So we have uh, Jeff versus Big Mike is just kind of like a f day where Ricky's boss and Ricky's sort of not quite boss got in a little pissing match or something kind of stupid at uh, the studio. And the whole story takes place. I mean, it's like a 25-minute podcast, but the whole story basically takes place over the course of a day in the studio. And then um, the second one is Rattlin' Day Long Weekend. So it's mostly he's talking about the things that happen on the Saturday of the long weekend. And then he kind of tacks on a little bit at the end of mentioning, you know, the aftermath on the Sunday and then the Monday of the long weekend. But... Um, Basically, it's, and this cheese wedge, by the way, I'm going to go over it with orange. I just want to block it in. Um, 
and then I'll do the books will be these grander, absurd adventures, you know, where Ricky tries to go to sea or um, whatnot. Uh, although I do have one story that actually kind of centers around Miles and some renovations he's doing, which would probably more properly be a... Um, a uh, podcast story but it's also there will be some things in it that would be better as visual gags so it might end up being a book but I'm talking about this I need to finish the first book first I'm gonna have to go over to erase some of the pink Isn't that what I said I didn't want to do yesterday? Yes, but <laughs> then I screwed up the spacing. Um, keep looking back at the camera uh, because then I can actually kind of it's nice because you kind of get a, a bit of a different perspective on, on it and um, one trick that I was told is look at things in a mirror well I'm using my actual camcorder so it has the side thing that flips out in the screen and you can turn it so if you're in front of the camera you can see but when you turn it in front of the camera it actually makes it mirror image um, but I've been told that one of the great, a good way to check your painting is actually to look at it in a mirror and things will jump out at you if they're screwed up. Um, like kind of like, let's make the letters just a little bit taller. Miles. And am I actually measuring this? No, I'm eyeballing it. but I think that looks more correct. Um, and now, this brush may be way too big for what I'm about to try, but I'm gonna see if I can do the corruption you can trust with the same brush. I have a feeling the answer is probably not, but we'll see. You know, in a way I kind of like where I screwed up the um, spacing on that, I will probably go over it, but in other places it almost looks like a drop shadow, so I may well just not try to completely hide the um, pink marker. Well, it's not marker, it's, it is paint, but you know, acrylic paint marker. Funny thing is, you know, way once upon a time, long, long ago, um, in the 90s, which one of well, I wouldn't say it's a running gag on uh, Noah's Archipelago, but I think I've done it a couple times where the eight-year-old daughter character in Noah's Archipelago um, will insist that things that the 90s and the 80s never existed because you know she wasn't alive then, so when her dad is telling her stories of, you know, back in the 90s, daddy, blah, 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 and she'll just say, daddy, the 90s weren't real. Um, anyway, so back in the not real times, when I was very briefly a, um, I got accepted to Emily Carr on the second round. So like, I got a rejection letter and then, you know, like three weeks later, I got a phone call at eight in the morning from the admissions officer telling me I'd made the, the cut on the second go round or whatever. Um, so I actually did go to um, foundation at Emily Carr in um, September of 96. But I failed miserably. I actually basically crashed and burned. I think part of it is, you know, if you're in a high school and everybody's blowing smoke up your butt about 
uh, you're a brilliant artist, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then you get there and you're in a class full of the brilliant artists, blah, 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 from their own high schools. Suddenly you're not special anymore. It's like, oh crap, what do we do now? Uh, but also I think, um, yeah, looking back, I probably didn't really know what I wanted to say. And that school was, has always been very, um, at least at the time it seemed, so this is my impression, but I've also heard similar things from rate your professors. Uh, people make uh, comments there, but it's always been a very um, conceptual art school. So uh, anyways, I actually had uh, the instructor I had for color theory um, in some critique we did. It's like, oh yeah, you had to do like a self portrait or whatever. And I, in some ways kind of phoned it in, admittedly. I used like colored contact crayon and I like did myself poking my face into the side of a mirror. So it'd be kind of something like that where you just saw part of my face, not the whole thing. Um, anyways, his comment <laughs> at that point was, your work is very illustrative. And believe me, that was not meant as a compliment. Uh, I'm gonna zoom out so you can sort of see how, where we're at. Uh, tilt it up, so there we go. It totally does look like the John Deere colors. Anyways, I'm sure this sort of stuff would still be kind of like, uh, your work is very illustrative. Um, on the other hand, they might take it as like a bashing uh, Trump thing, which even though Trump is kind of irrelevant other than as a basically body double. Um, so if they took his bashing Trump, then they'd probably love this painting. Uh, but anyways, here I am. I'm still doing uh, your work is very illustrative type of stuff. Um, what do I want to do? The other thing, how long has have we been going on? I think we've been... Uh, I can't tell. Uh, it doesn't say time elapsed, but... I think what I'm going to do now, and if this video is running late, long, I may just kind of do some sped up sections um, to try and keep it under an hour because I know that's a long ass time. Um, but I want to go and try and knock out some of the grid that shows up in spots. So uh, let's see how we can do this. I believe what I had for here was a combo of that. Actually, I'm gonna... Well, I've got yellow on my palette. I'm gonna dump some Naples yellow in and try and kind of color match. Um, and this may not work, but we'll see. Uh, but anyways, I guess I'm just like randomly whining about the olden days with Emily Carr, but it doesn't even matter now because, you know, obviously I'm no longer a student there. But it's kind of, uh, it is kind of funny um, that uh, in some ways my work, I have seen some old sketchbooks. I have a tour actually um, of like one of my high school sketchbooks, um, which is like that Trent Reznor one that's up in parts on this channel. And it's funny to see just how similar other than at that point I wasn't drawing rats right but uh, my drawing style never mind not so much the uh, actual subject matter but the actual um, manner of which manner in which I drew uh, the cartooning style the line work and all that is like so freaking similar um, some would say that means I haven't progressed at all, but you know, screw them. <laughs> and so anyways, I'm just kind of going over. I don't want to make the background super uniform. I actually like in parts where you can see the blue under wash showing through. I think it gives some depth. Um, but what I'm trying to do, and let me just tilt the camera down so you can see because I'm working in the bottom corner is to try and knock out these grid lines um, and disrupt them. It may take a few layers because I may need to, you know, let it dry and go over again. Um, because 
some ways. Um, some ways I'm still seeing it going through. I mean, if I can't get rid of the... God help me if I can't get rid of the grid line um, by the end of the weekend. I think I can, though. I mean, because there's already spots where I really can't see it at all. Um, and I think I said on yesterday's video, I have learned a bit of a lesson about using a dark paint pen for grid lines. Um, in the future, I will use light colored ones. Um, and I think the other thing I'm going to, like, with this one, and you can kind of tell, like, with yesterday's video with, like, his tie, and we'll tint that as well, but where I still had the uh, wash underneath, um, and I just filled in color, but I think what I'm going to do on um, the next painting I do is to do a tonal, um, like, with an opaque color that will hide the grid, but um, do some sort of, like, whether it's sepia or even if it's, like, something like shades of pink, hot pink or something, but something that would um, knock out the grid. So, and the, so it would be almost like grayscale, that kind of underpainting, and then go in with color on top. Um, and in some ways this sort of working style is um, a bit new to me, you can probably tell, eh? Um, but honestly, uh, this is kind of the first time I've been doing uh, what could be considered representational. Well, if, even that's not quite accurate because I've done other representational stuff over the years, but I've been doing a lot over like over the last 20 years when I've been painting, I've, a lot of it has tended to be, um, I don't want to sound pompous, like, oh, really symbol symbolic um, or abstract, but it'll be stuff like where I go, I don't do a grid, I don't plan in advance, and I kind of will do like a mishmash of color all over, and then I'll on top of that, start bringing in textures and whatnot. And what I was doing when I, um, you know, a few years ago was I was doing stuff where if I wanted something representational, I was doing a lot of series at that point that had to do with like um, perfume bottles and high heels and, uh, you know, the kind of stuff that uh, women have been using for hundreds of years is uh, beauty enhancers and in some ways that... Uh, you could say power enhancers because, you know, it'll scramble a man's brain pretty quickly when you get to, uh, when you start walking in with your high heels and all that sort of stuff. Um, but that, of course, is not politically correct to say. Um, so, for a second I thought I heard my phone ringing. It's like, oh, is another telemarketer going to be calling in the middle of these videos? But anyway, so what I was doing, if I wanted to put in like a perfume bottle or something was, I was actually drawing it on um, like watercolor paper, rip it out and like sewing it onto the background. Um, sewing through canvas is a nightmare. I'm just saying, you, like if you want to go ahead and do it, but your hands are gonna hurt and you're gonna bugger up your wrists and all that. So I don't recommend it, but um, I was doing that kind of stuff. Um, and then like layering on top with, you know, um, mediums and rhinestones and glitter and all this sort of stuff. So point is, um, a lot of my representational work like this, where you can tell, oh, it's a mouse dude. I would do that in drawings, not on canvas. So that's why I'm mentioning that, uh, because it's been a while until the last couple months. It was, you know, probably years before I since I last did, you know, paintings that actually had like a plan and a um, represent, you know, were supposed to look like something in, in particular. So I'm kind of having to relearn stuff I've forgotten. <laughs> like, if you do a grid, it might show through. Oh, I'm pointing to something that's off camera. But here, you can sort of see that vertical black line of the grid and here. Um, so I'm having to relearn these techniques, <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, 
It's kind of a good challenge. I've actually a lot of the representational work I've been doing on the last two or three years, two years for sure, has been um, has been printmaking, monotype printmaking. Um, I have some examples in my shorts. Uh, that sounds like a weird thing to say, you know. Um, <laughs> short videos or reels on Instagram, whatever, um, where I speed up um, when I'm doing monotypes on uh, plexiglass print. So you can sort of see how I do that. But again, that is, there's no grid or anything. That is just straight up freehand drawing, run it through the press and we'll see what we get. So um, anyways, this is kind of been fun to get back into, you know, painting, making my uh, illustrative um, work, right? And I'm also trying to kind of clean up this line over his shoulder, but here we go. And yes, I am going to turn him around so I can wrap the, this color around. I don't even know how much of what I'm doing actually shows because it's probably all just my shoulder in the background until I move my arm down. But hey, fortunately my shoulders are buggered up a little bit, so that means I can't hold my arm up too long. I have to bring it down and take a break, like right there, because it feels like I'm being stabbed. Um, so anyways, uh, just cleaning up some of the lines. Yeah, I want to have enough areas like here by his ear where it shows through with the under, um, with the uh, wash underpainting and even even the paint pen outline, so you can see that that was part of the process and it looks like you know the faintest bit of outline, but not so many that it's all over the place. Basically, make it kind of deliberate. And I think on those lines I'm going to go in because this is one of those um, cheap ass bristle brushes and it is splayed out for sure. I'm painting so you can sort of see a little bit of what I'm doing. Let's tidy that up a little by his tail. Okay, so we got rid of some of that. So I had some painting instructors over the years, especially in watercolor, they get kind of annoyed if you have like an area around there and the color doesn't go under. And it's like, well, but it's also kind of a stylistic thing sometimes to have those kind of outlines. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. idea had been also to come in at the very end and um, do it after it's all dry and like mask off and do some glazing areas so that you have like rays of high gloss the only thing is I might have to do that after Calyx uh, couch exhibition because I mean, if I do it thinly enough it should in theory be dry but some of those mediums I find they are sticky for like three weeks so that's probably something I won't want to risk uh, probably prefer to um, yeah, 
just kind of um, have um, the paint alone. Although I am still debating that I may come back in with paint pens and um, do something with them. Nice and vague kind of comment. Do something with them. But uh, because I cartoon, like it might be fun to do even just some like, little like swirls and squiggles in with a uh, paint marker in in the, the um, and I might even sort of start with this hot pink and kind of going around uh, pointing at something that's down here. But uh, hang on. I'm talking about like where I have the hot pink marker, which I hope kind of shows up. It's hard to tell in the camera. Um, what I may do instead of going in and tidying all this up is go over again to um, have more of an almost graffiti effect. That's probably not making much sense, but um, to add in where there's almost like deliberate mistakes around so it looks like it's intentional. Um, Although, why would his podium be like that? But also, why wouldn't it? Because, you know, it's not a real podium. And, you know, Miles wouldn't be the first uh, politician to try and go like, Look, I am, hello fellow kids, I am just like you, or whatever try and get votes. Um, so I'm just going to turn this around a little bit so I can see what I'm doing on the side. And let's zoom out. There we go. See the very glamorous paper roll in the uh, back by my kitchen? Hey yo! At some point my camcorder battery died, or actually I think the hard drive filled up, or whatever. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what all I've lost. And sorry, the chair is still squeaky. Um, but basically I just knocked out some more of the grid and put in that kind of cheese with a Z color. Um, did a little touch up in some areas um, but yeah I don't know exactly how long I missed uh, so I'm just gonna wrap it up here uh, we still have to fill in his tie um, I'll have to go over the lettering again I'm just gonna pan in and move the camera so you can kind of see some of the pink it probably showed up in the other camera when I zoomed in but I don't know um, so we ain't finished with Miles yet, but we made some headway. A couple of things still to fill in, and like I said, I'm the more I think of it, the more I like the idea of going in with a marker, like a uh, paint marker, and um, certainly for the smaller letters like that council, I may like deliberately go uh, over and add more to that um, rather than try and outline it in green. Um, to fix it. So I may kind of deliberately um, add some, not really graffiti, but some of that texture. I want to add some like swirly stuff and we'll see what happens and uh, probably I will not mess with Miles's face because I think I, I don't want to screw that up other than just a little bit by the corner of his eye. You can still see the grid line there. Um, but I may add some swirly bits and other you know, who knows what to describe it as elsewhere. And um, yeah, so we'll see where we get to in the next video. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and bye for now.